Digga 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 this is Maria And digga 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 this is Hester And digga together we are The Consort Counselors Today's episode of The Consort Counselors is about the fascinating technique of double tonguing What exactly is double tonguing? Double tonguing happens when we use different areas of the tongue to produce the syllables that we articulate with for example, one in the front and one in the back, and we alternate those. Some examples of syllables that you can use for double tonguing. Teka 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 teka. Diga 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 diga. Nenga 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 nenga. And there is more. Why do we use double tonguing? Well, mainly to gain speed. Because as you can imagine, if you produce one syllable with the tip of your tongue and you need to repeat that all the time, it goes like. And when you use also the back of the tongue and alternate, you can go much faster, like this. The challenge is to get your double tonguing as smooth and as balanced as your single tonguing. And also as flexible as your single tonguing so that you feel that you have some room to play with different timings and that you can uh, have perfect control and choice of all your syllables. You can also choose for a wide range of uh, double tonguing from very very smooth to chiffy and very violent and those are all great to use in different kinds of music. Do you and your ensemble want to be able to play faster, smoother and with a lot of variety in your articulation? Let's get started! <laughs> This is an exercise in a circle and everybody should take an alto in 440. Each of us is going to get to play for four beats. We will play the middle D and when the exercise starts we are just gonna play one note per beat and we are going to use the syllables D G D G and we choose these ones rather than teke teke because dege dege is much smoother and therefore we can focus on a continuous, beautiful and smooth sound. We are going to use our friend the metronome and we are going to start playing one note per beat. When we have done one round we will speed up and do two notes per beat and then four and then eight until we derail. Make sure that your tongue moves as little as possible and also make sure that your tongue always uses the same position for making the D and the G. Otherwise... When you use your tongue like this, like we just did, your air can never have a continuous flow. Another tip for this is make your tongue in the back a little bit wide so that you feel your teeth in the back of your mouth. And if you keep this position for the back of your tongue, it will be stable all the time and you will move your tongue as little as possible. <laughs> Now continue with an exercise that is quite similar to the first. We are each going to play for four beats, but we're gonna pick a faster tempo and we're just going to stick to one speed, which is four sixteenth notes per beat. And we are also going to change pitch, because for each pitch that you choose, you're gonna need to adjust a little bit the amount of air, the air pressure and the way you play your articulation to keep it equally smooth. So to practice that, player one, in this case me, has the right to change the pitch going around the circle every time we come back to the beginning.
We are going to choose one chord, let's say F major, and with the syllables dega 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 you are going to change the pitch as you like, as you feel in the chord of F major. So F, A and C are the possibilities in all the range of your instrument. We play this all together so that we get a nice soundscape of F major. We choose a tempo that we like, but if you feel not comfortable with the tempo we chose, please pick a faster or a slower tempo. It's anyway very good to practice these exercises in different tempi. Now, to continue with this exercise, we can add a second chord to the game. So what we are going to do is every eight beats, and that means every four different pitches that we have played, we are going to swap and instead of F major, we are going to move into C major. So we get a nice game of tonica, dominant, tonica, dominant. <laughs> you can also add more chords to this exercise. For example, B flat major. Uh, so if we start with F major, then the second chord would be B flat major, and then C major, and then we end again with F major. You have a really nice chain of chords. Another possibility is that instead of articulating the four sixteenth notes, as we have now, that we imagine a variation in the rhythm. So, for example, instead of we say or and like that, you can maybe achieve higher speeds. try different lengths for this exercise as well. Uh, trying short d and gus and maybe even short t and cus to make it a little bit more explosive. Let's try to experiment with this and when you want to make it smooth you can use nang and nang and nang and nang It really works. <laughs> to play a pattern involving a little scale going up and down, followed by four eighth notes. Divide your group in two. One group is going to follow me. We are going to start with this little scale and when we get to our first eighth note, then the second group is going to start and we are going to loop this motif so the whole time you will hear this little scale going up and down through the ensemble. Let's try a bit faster, shall we? Let's try a bit faster, shall we? add also other scales to this pattern, then you can better not do it in canon because that may sound a bit strange. We are going to go through C major, F major, G major, C major.
Last but not least, let's try a typical Baroque style pattern. And in this case, we use a Vivaldi concerto, but it could be from any other Baroque concerto. The melody of this pattern is really simple. It goes like this. And this pattern is accompanied by a spectacular run of 16s, like this. And in these kind of patterns, it is all about overview, direction and drive until the end. Or let's say just before the end, the excitement is the most and in the end it is a release. Let's make each new note of the main melody a little bit longer to bring out uh, the development and let's make the other notes slightly less important a little bit shorter. What about we play this pattern an octave higher and see how this feels and how this affects the way we need to articulate or to give more air. Now we have actually three elements that we can also combine and divide between the members of the ensemble when we do this exercise. We have the simple theme in the low octave or in the high octave and we have the 16th notes in the low octave or in the high octaves. So you can also make different combinations in different tempi. instrument the recorder is so amazing because we can actually literally speak through the instrument every single nuance or every single variation we make with our articulation has a result for the outcome this we find very very fascinating and it is again a difference with other wind instruments that have embouchure or a lot of resistance before the air comes into the instrument so recorder power Usually when we think of very virtuosic articulation, we may imagine someone playing a Vivaldi concerto or some really fast contemporary music. But you know who are also very, very virtuosic articulators? Beatboxers. And perhaps you are not yet familiar with the work of Medat Mamdou. And this is our tip for today. We leave you a link in the video description. Check it out and get to practice. Yeah. Digga, 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 don't forget to subscribe. And if you have questions or good, digga, 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 for us, contact, contact us here. here. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye.